Namaste and welcome back to my channel. My name is Pooja and this video is a tutorial on how to practice Kapal Bhati. So if you're ready to learn about this beautiful breathing technique that will energize you, invigorate your mind and your body and detoxify your physical and emotional bodies, let's get started. All right, friends, like I said, this is a tutorial for Kapal Bhati. I'll start off by demonstrating one round for you, just so that you can get an idea. And then I'll speak about the technique, the method. How do we practice Kapal Bhati? In the end, I will also mention the contraindications and the precautions. So please do stay tuned until the end of the video, because it's really, really important for you to know when not to practice this breathing technique. So I'm going to start off with that small demo for you. I'll just do about 10 pumps and then I'll follow this with a short retention of breath and then I'll speak about the technique after. So that was one round of Kapal Bhati with breath retention or Kumbhaka at the end. So let's begin with the technique, the method. How do we practice this? Do we practice this seated? How many rounds do we practice? How do we breathe in? How do we breathe out? I will answer all those questions now. So first of all, in yoga, Kapal Bhati is one of the Shat Kriyas, the cleansing techniques. So this is because this is a breathing technique that really, really helps to detoxify the body. We're expelling a lot of toxins through those sharp exhalations. And it not only helps to detoxify the physical body, but also the mental body. And this, you will notice it when you start a regular Kapal Bhati practice. You will notice a lot of mental clarity. You will find yourself having a lot of clarity in the mind after practicing Kapal Bhati regularly. Second thing, like I said, this is a detoxifying breathing technique. Um, so you do want to practice this in a clean space. After all, this involves a lot of breathing. So you want to make sure you're detoxifying your body and you're not bringing in more toxins. <laughs> you're breathing in clean air. That's really, really important. All right, how do we sit? If you're able to sit on the floor, ideally you would sit on the floor in a cross-legged position or in a lotus position, whichever feels most comfortable for you. However, if you're not comfortable sit sitting on the floor, it is absolutely fine to sit on a chair and practice this seated on a chair. Just make sure your feet are flat on the floor and that your hands can rest comfortably on your knees or on your thighs. Also very, very important is that your spine stays upright throughout. So if you're able to sit on the floor, but you are uncomfortable in the hips and you end up rounding through the spine, you might want to place a cushion or a folded blanket under the sitting bones. This will give you a little bit of relief in the hips because it will get your sitting bones a little lifted and your knees will be at a lower level. So try that out and see if it helps you to lengthen through the spine. You want to keep your shoulders relaxed throughout and the neck in alignment with the spine. So it's really important to have your ears over the shoulders instead of letting the head hang forward. This creates a lot of strain in the neck muscles. Okay, so sit upright, keep your neck in alignment with the spine, crown of the head reaching up and the ears are over the shoulders. You might have noticed in my demo that I tucked my chin in slightly during the practice. This is because if you're still new to this, you might feel a bit dizzy or lightheaded when you start off. If that happens, just tuck in your chin slightly 
and practice Kapalbhati with your chin slightly tucked in. This will help you not feel um, lightheaded. However, if you do still feel very, very dizzy with this practice, please stop, take a break, take a few deep breaths, a few normal breaths, and then start again. If it continues, then I would suggest consulting your doctor and starting this practice only once you've been cleared by your doctor. All right, now let's have a look at how to breathe. The inhalations and the exhalations happen through the nose. So everything happens through the nose. This technique involves an active and sharp exhalation and a passive inhalation. So the inhalations will happen naturally between the exhales. Make sure that you inhale, please. It's not just exhaling. So you exhale and then there's a natural inhalation. You exhale, there's a natural inhalation. How does the sharp exhale happen? So you want to think of drawing the belly button in and up. So it's not about only about sucking the belly button in and contracting your abdominals. Think more of a scooping action, in and up, in and up, in and up. So you want to pull your belly button in and up. Visualize that happening with every exhalation, right? What will help you achieve this is to keep your ribs lifted. So let's try this together. Bring your hands to your ribs, sit upright, shoulders relaxed, and take a deep breath in through the nose. Notice how your ribs lift and expand. So once you have this, you want to maintain this as you pump the belly or take those sharp exhales. All right, so once again, sit upright, keep your hands relaxed, take a deep breath in and feel your ribs lift and expand. This is your inhale to prepare. Think of this as preparing for Kapalbhati. And now pull the belly button in and up. Inhale, pull the belly button in and up. To heighten the awareness of this action in the abdominal region, you can even place your hands on the belly initially as you start with this practice and gently press in. And once you get the hang of it, you can release your hands. Now, how do we place our hands? You're going to relax your shoulders completely and then notice where your hands land naturally and comfortably, on your knees or on your thighs. This is where you'll place your hands, as simple as that. You want to keep your palms facing up and then bring the tips of your index fingers and the thumbs to touch in Gyan Mudra, the gesture of knowledge. Like I said, we are keeping our awareness on the third eye chakra and the third eye chakra is the seat of wisdom of clarity, of mental clarity, of intuition. So Gyan Mudra is the gesture of knowledge, of wisdom. All right, so our hands will be placed here on our knees or on the thighs, palms facing up, index and thumbs meet, okay? So I've mentioned the spine, the neck, the chin slightly tucked in. Now, the shoulders. I've already mentioned you want to keep your shoulders relaxed. And that's really, really important because I see this a lot. And I see this a lot. So you want to avoid any funny expressions and straining of the facial muscles when you practice Kapalbhati. And you want to avoid any violent movement in your chest, in your upper body and the shoulders. Think more of keeping your shoulders still and just letting your abdominals do the work. Okay, so your next question might be, how many pumps do we start with? How many pumps should we ideally practice? I would say, start slow, start small. You can start off with 10 pumps 
and do two rounds or three rounds of 10 pumps each. So that would be that's 10 pumps, one round of Kapalvati. Okay. If this feels like it's too much, start with five. That's absolutely fine. It's really, really important to listen to your own body and how it's reacting to these breathing techniques, especially in pranayama. It's very important to go slow. So start with five to 10 rounds, uh, five to 10 pumps, two to three rounds. And then after practicing this for about two weeks or three weeks, move on to 15 pumps. And then after two weeks, move on to 20 pumps. Go slow. Make sure your body is getting used to it. So do this daily for two weeks, three weeks, even a month if you need that long. Do it for a month and then move on to 30 and 40 and 50. You can go up to 80 pumps per round. But that is at a very, very advanced level. So I would suggest start with 20 30, 40, and get a strong, strong, solid foundation. Now let's talk about the pace. How fast or how slow should you go? You want to make sure that you are inhaling between each exhalation. That's the most important. And I would say keep that as a rule, a rule of thumb, when you want, when, if you're wondering what pace you should go at. So have a look now. I'm going to inhale to prepare. And now I'll start pumping the belly. One, two, 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 one, two. One, two. This would be a comfortable pace to start with. And then you can increase the speed to one, two, 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 one, two and then increase a little more. But like I said, the most important is that you are inhaling between the exhalations. If you're going too fast and you're not able to inhale, then it's time to slow it down. All right, let's talk about that little pause, that little breath retention that I took after my round of Kapalbhati. Now, this is a very, very important part of pranayam, retention in general, kumbhaka, in Sanskrit is a very, very important part of pranayam, breathing exercises, because that is a pause that allows your body to experience healing. It is a pause that allows your body and mind to experience stillness and silence. It also allows the body or your cells to take oxygen more efficiently or effectively, especially after Kapalbhati, because we have expelled so much CO2, we've expelled toxins, so our cells are ready to take oxygen. So we're going to take a deep breath in and hold our breath. Now, when you breathe in, think of filling up about three quarters of your lungs. Keep your shoulders relaxed. And then tuck the chin in towards the chest while keeping your breastbone lifted. So this is what we call the chin lock or the throat lock. I won't talk about this in detail in this video. We'll make another video about this. But you want to lift the chest, lift the breastbone as you take a deep breath in. And then tuck the chin in towards the chest, keeping the back of your neck long and the shoulders relaxed. And hold your breath. And while you hold the breath, tune in to the beauty of stillness, to the beauty of silence, and allow the body to experience that. So it shouldn't feel like you are fighting. You're fighting to stay in that pause. You're fighting to hold your breath. If you feel like you're straining, maybe you're holding too long. Start with maybe four seconds maybe five seconds, and then you can go on to 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, but you shouldn't be straining. Again, please do not practice breath retention if you feel dizzy or if you feel uncomfortable holding your breath. Okay, this brings me to the contraindications. If you have recently had any surgery, especially in the abdominal region, 
please do not practice Kapalbhati until you've been cleared by your doctor. Ladies, if you have your period, if you're menstruating, do not practice this because as you can see, it involves a very strong contraction in the abdominal muscles. It might create some uh, discomforts for you. If you are pregnant or if you have recently given birth, of course, please do not practice this until your doctor has cleared you for such practices and for exercise in general. If you suffer from any heart conditions or any serious heart um, ailments, please do not practice this. If you have hypertension, high blood pressure, if you have a pacemaker or hernia, do not practice Kapalbhati. Always, always consult your doctor before you start any new practice. Also, like I mentioned earlier, if you feel dizzy and if that continues, even, even after you've taken a few breaks, you've taken a few deep breaths, please stop this practice immediately and consult your doctor before you start um, or try this practice again. So I hope I've covered everything. Um, no, I haven't. <laughs> when do we practice this? You want to practice this on an empty stomach. Again, you don't want to have strong contractions in the abdominal muscles when you have just eaten. So the best time to practice this is early morning. You have emptied your bowels, you've not eaten as yet, and you're ready to energize your body and invigorate your mind and your body. So this is recommended in the morning because it's a very, very energizing practice. You do not want to practice this in the afternoon because that's when we want to get our body ready for rest, for bedtime. Okay? So mornings are the best for this. Empty stomach is a must. However, if you've eaten, if you've um, eaten something and you want to practice this after, make sure you have a break of at least two and a half to three hours from your last meal before you practice Kapalbhati. So now I think I have covered everything. If you still do have questions, please let us know in the comments and we'll get back to you with our answers um, to those questions. Thank you very, very much for watching. Do leave a like to this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to our channel so that you stay notified and you stay connected with us whenever we have new videos coming up. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you again very, very soon. Namaste.